Welcome to part four of the chemistry video tutorials going over reaction basics. This tutorial is going to focus on kinetics. When we hear the word kinetics, we're thinking about the reaction rates and how fastly, how fast a reaction can occur. All right, let's get started. Let's see. So we've already defined the term kinetics, and so we'll look at reaction rates, activation energy, transition states, and catalysts. So activation energy, we can symbolize E sub A, and transition states um, will be symbolized with the T dot S. Alrighty. Now, the reaction rates, it's all about how fast a reaction proceeds. So when we studied thermodynamics, we could say whether or not a reaction was favored, but we didn't know how quickly that would happen. So what we're going to learn about now is that if we have a large activation energy, we will have slow reaction rates. And if we have small activation energies, we get fast reaction rates. And so we'll um, use these graphs to help illustrate this, these relationships. Right? So, as we learned from collision theory, the activation energy is the minimum energy, um, the combined kinetic energy of reactants that they must possess for the collision to result in a reaction. So let's look at these two reactions here, reaction A and reaction B. So. Um, let's um, do a little bit of review on our thermodynamics. First of all, if we look at reaction A, is it endothermic or exothermic, right? So that's about thermodynamics. So this is a thermodynamics question. And we can see right here that this is where we look for thermodynamics, the difference in energy between reactants and products, and we would describe this as exothermic because heat is released because of the um, lower energy of the products. And now if we look at reaction B, we see the opposite shape, and so we can guess it's the opposite one, and that's referred to as endothermic. And here, energy must be absorbed, so we put a plus delta H because the products are higher in energy than the reactants. All right, now let's get to the new stuff. The, kin um, the kinetics, which reaction is faster, right? So now, right, the rates is all about the activation energy. So there's the activation energy of reaction A, and here is the, re the activation energy of reaction B. So when we're drawing the activation energy, it's the um, energy from the reactants, to the transition state, right? So that's the maximum energy that needs to be um, possessed by the reactants to get the reaction to occur. So if we think about this, let's say we were in a race, and one team got to race to the top of this hill, right? One team started here at the reactants and only had to race to the top of this hill, and then the competitors had to start way down here and race all the way to the top of the hill, right? Who's going to get there faster? Well, definitely, it's going to be reaction A, right? So we can think of it as a smaller hill to climb or a smaller activation energy, right? That creates the faster reaction rate. All righty, so let's go to the next page now and look at what factors affect reaction rates. So, get that centered. There we go. Okay. So, there are three main um, considerations for, um, con that affect reaction rates. The concentration of the reactants, and remember that we'll use these symbols here, the brackets, to represent concentration or the temperature, or the presence of a catalyst. That's enough there. Okay. 
Alrighty, so there's the three factors. Now we'll go through them systematically. So we'll start with the concentration. And so I think this one is, is pretty um, intuitive and logical. As we increase the concentration of the reactants, we're going to increase the reaction rates, right? All linked back to collision theory. The more reactants, the more likely they're going to collide. It's just a probability thing. And of course, if we lose reactants, if reactants are lost, or the amount of reactants is decreased, that's going to slow down the reaction rate. There's less chance of collisions if there's less reactants. Now that we've looked at it and described it verbally, let's look at what this means graphically. All right, so I'll see if I how much of this I can get. Well, we're close. Okay, so here we have a reaction of dinitrogen pentoxide decomposing into nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. And so let's look at how the concentration of the dinitrogen pentoxide, right, Notice as the reaction proceeds that the concentration is lowered. So now let's connect this to the reaction rate. So we see when the, when the concentration of the dinitrogen pentoxide is high, right, we're getting a large change in concentration, right, because the rate is fast. I guess we could put that in there. Okay. If we look later, later in the reaction progress, as the dinitrogen pentoxide reaction decreases, now if we look at the change, we see that it's much smaller, right? We get a smaller change in our reaction rate. And the way that we're measuring the reaction rate is by the change in our reactant. So we see that there's a smaller change in our reactant, right? Um, because the rate is slower. So this, um, this graph illustrates the, the concept of concentration and how it affects reaction rates. And then for those of you that like information in a table form, we can look at it right here, a third presentation. If we look right at the highest concentration, we have the fastest rate. And at the lower concentration, we have a much slower rate. So, and ideally, I'd put those color coordinating. All right. Okay, so that summarizes the effects of concentration on reaction rates. Now let's see what happens with temperature. So the concepts in this tutorial are heavily based on coll the collision theory. So if some of the terms or concepts I'm describing are um, unfamiliar to you, it'd be a good idea to go back over the collision theory video tutorial. All right, remember collision theory. So, um, as we increase the temperature, what happens is, right, we increase the kinetic energy of the system, and so that increases the energy of the collisions it also increases the number of collisions. So with this logic, we can see that as we increase the temperature, we are going to increase the reaction rate. There is a rule of thumb. For every 10 degrees that we increase the reaction temperature, the rate doubles. Alrighty, and so this is an example of why we refrigerate our food, right? We cool our, f oops, we, um, we cool our food to slow down the rate of spoilage, right? We're slowing down those reactions inside the food that cause our food to rot. Okay, and then let's see, what else can we talk about here? Oh, okay, and then another thing related to temperature is that um, because for our health, our bodies need to maintain constant temperature. 
So in the laboratory, it's really common to increase the, the temperature of a reaction to make it go faster. But inside our body, we don't have that luxury. We don't want to boil our cells, right? So since we cannot use heat to increase um, the pathways, we need a different strategy. And this strategy is catalysts. So that leads us to the third factor that can affect um, reaction rates. So let's take a closer look at catalysts. All righty. So we, here we have a couple um, reaction energy diagrams. We have an exothermic reaction. And let's see. So I asked you to label that. Well, we see exothermic here, and we recognize that right there as minus delta H, right? The difference between reactants and products. We have the same exothermic reaction. Notice that it has the same delta H negative delta H, they're the same magnitude. And then we have an endothermic reaction. Well, we'll just stay with green. An endothermic reaction, and then here, now we have our positive delta H. All right. So now that we have that part figured out, let's, um, let's look at this effect of the catalyst. All right. So here's our activation energy with no catalyst. And then notice what happens to the activation energy um, when we do have a catalyst, right? So we've done this part right, right down here. We have labeled the activation energy for B. And let's go ahead and label the activation energy for C. All right. So now that we've studied our reaction energy diagrams, let's think about what all this means, right? So a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without being consumed in the reaction. So what changes in our reaction energy diagram? How does the catalyst increase this rate? Well, it seems very obvious now that we've um, made these comments on our, on our diagrams, right, that it, the catalyst lowers, right, decreases the activation energy, and that creates a faster reaction rate. Um, so when we're trying to label the reaction energy diagrams, we have two things to consider, right? Everything hinges on the reactants. The enthalpy is the difference between reactants and products. The activation energy is the reactants to the transition state. All right, so we've got those labeled now. All right, so the transition state that we symbolize TS, that's the particular arrangement of atoms in the reactants at the maximum energy level, right? So, um, so remember, uh, you want to be able to label your graphs so you want notes to yourself, right? The activation energy is the minimum energy to reach the transition state. And so remembering that um, we go from reactants to transition state. And then to wrap this up, what happens to reactant molecules that have less than the energy of the transition state, right? So that's saying that the energy is less than the activation energy, right? So that's another way to phrase it. So if the reactants are colliding and their energy is below the active ener activation energy, what happens? Nothing, right? There's no reaction. If we wanted to um, look at our graph, for example, if the reactants only had this much energy, right, they would come to here, but that's not enough. The reactants have to get all the way, have to have enough energy to get all the way to the top of the transition state. Then the reaction will occur. And so um, as we venture into biochemistry, we will learn that in our body, we're going to use enzymes as our biochemical catalysts. 
All right. So this concludes the reaction um, rates kinetics video tutorial. Take some time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.